Hello and welcome back. This is again Physics for the 21st Century. My name is Greg Perugini and today's topic is linear momentum and impulse. We're first going to address what linear momentum is. Momentum is how we model a particle in motion uh, in terms of its mass. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And of course, these are vectors. Mass, of course, is a scalar. So momentum can happen in a couple of directions, particularly when we're talking about uh, con conservation of momentum in a two-dimensional system. But right now, we're going to be just talking about momentum in, uh, in a one-dimensional system and trying to get through an understanding that momentum is conserved momentum final is equal to momentum initial providing the system is a closed system doesn't leak energy in any way momentum is conserved now a change in momentum is impulse and impulse is also equal to we'll get to this in a little bit force for a given period of time. So we can write that all together. As the impulse momentum theorem, which is impulse is equal to momentum final minus momentum initial which is equal to force for a given time. And if we look at a curve or a line or whatever, force for a given time, it would be the area under that curve. under the force curve. So it's probably best to show this with a very simple example of, of linear momentum first. Let's do a simple example of linear momentum first. I have two people on ice skates. They're on a uh, they're on a uh, pond here, and they push against each other, and they're flying apart. This one person is seventy-five kilograms, and this one person is a hundred kilograms. So, if this person on that push apart is going 3 meters per second, what is the speed of this person? So this is a typical linear momentum problem. The befores must equal the after. So, for both of these, let's call this person 1 and this person 2, the momentum before is 0. They're not moving. But then they press up against each other and push, and they go apart. The total momentum before is 0. After, we have in the positive direction, P equal MV, and that is equal to, for ball number 2, 3 meters per second, or uh, I'll put the 
mass first. 100 kilograms times 3 meters per second. And that leaves me with 300 kilogram meters per second. That is the units for, for momentum. Now the other one, ball number one, we know the mass, 75, but we don't know the velocity. But we do know what? Both of them together has got to equal zero because the before is zero. So that leaves us with the equation. Both of them together, momentum for the first, 300 positive, plus 75 velocity of number one, let's call that final of number one, has to equal zero. Well, we could do the math very easily on that, and what is then that velocity? Negative 4 meters per second. So this person is going off in this direction at 3 meters per second. This one's going in the negative direction at 4 meters per second. Momentum is conserved. We're not talking about losing it to friction. In this case, a closed system on ice, very little friction, momentum would be conserved. Now, in terms of impulse, impulse is the change in momentum, and we see impulse, I mean, if you, if you dropped an egg from a height of 10 meters onto the ground versus onto a pillow, you would see a difference, right? Uh, if I want a greater uh, amount of force when I hit a tennis ball, I want to follow through so that there is a greater amount of time adding more impulse. We also, in some cases, don't want as much impulse. We have, for instance, a, um, or as much force interacting, I should say. If I uh, have an airbag, I'm in an accident. Without the impact, without the uh, airbag, I'm going to impact with a larger force. But if I can take that force over a time period, the impulse is less. So, let's, let's take a look at um, an impulse problem. Uh, let's write down that theorem again. I equal P final minus P initial. This is the impulse momentum theorem equal to force for a given change in time. So if I have a ball coming down This is the x and y axis. And this ball is coming down, strikes the ground, goes back up. Mass of two of uh, two kilograms. Okay. hits the ground at a velocity of 3 meters per second. Bounces up 
at 2 meters per second. What is the impulse? Impulse being the change in momentum, momentum final minus momentum initial. It's merely, in this case, momentum final, 2 kilograms times 2 meters per second, minus momentum initial, since this, this is down, this is a negative, negative, or a 2 kilograms times negative 3 meters per second. This gives us 4 plus 6 equal 10. So the impulse, newtons, newton seconds, that's the unit for impulse, newton seconds, is 10 in this case. So let's take a look at this part. What if um, the contact with the ground lasted 0.01 seconds? What was the force? Well, we know that impulse is equal to change in momentum is equal to force over a period of time. So in this case, it would be 10 equals to force times 0.01, that period of time. And therefore, the force would be equal to thousand newtons of force. Now just like in the examples I gave, whether I'm hitting a tennis ball and I want more force or whether I'm using a um, an airbag and I want to feel less force or force distributed over time is a better way to put it perhaps. Um, time is that factor. Let's look at the calculus involved here. Say the same example that we were using here, or, well, let's give another example. Let's say that I have a force line that is 500t squared minus 2t. And it happens from 0 to point one second. What is the impulse? Well, it's that area under the curve and we get that via an in integral. To get the area under that curve it's the integral, definite integral, five hundred t squared minus two t dt. If you do that integral, and you should be able to do that easily, it's just a simple reverse power rule here. Five hundred t to the third over three minus two t the second over 2 from 0 to point 0.1, you should get 0.156 newton seconds as the answer. So, again, we must keep clear here. We'll talk about collisions in the next chapter. But remember, momentum is conserved. The before must equal the after. Know your impulse momentum theorem 
know the calculus involved, and do some examples in the book and online. You might not find too many examples online of the calculus, so study what I've done here, and uh, good luck.